dudes and dudettes. How are you guys? This is Chazzy and welcome back to The Mixer, the segment on this channel where I give you guys all sorts of detailed analyses from all walks of life. I'll talk about people, places, animals, food, traveling, sports, the whole nine yards. Hence why it's called The Mixer because I mix things up here in this giant playlist, you know, with over 200 freaking videos at this point. Holy crap, I really like to mix things up, huh? So now today's video, oh, by the way, in case you guys haven't noticed, I shaved completely. You know, I took the razor to my skin and I'm looking really good. It still kind of itches though. I, I rubbed some moisturizer in, but it's still kind of, but it was recent and I kind of like just shaved like less than an hour ago. Still gotta get a haircut. I'm gonna get one later today. So this is actually gonna be the only video that I'm gonna be recording today because I can't stand this hair of mine anymore. It's freaking irritating. So every video from here on out is gonna be me with shorter hair, you know? But anyway, uh, today's video is going to be a very interesting thing. You know, for starters, it's gonna be a concept vlog, which is a vlog where I come here, you know? It's a, a term that I coined on this channel where I just come here and talk to you guys, you know, with very minimal of any editing at all. So it's literally just the outro. Uh, it's literally just the intro the video with background music and then the outro at the end, you know, and Today I'm going to be doing a very personal topic, you know, which is going to be very remnant of my old days on YouTube, you know, because I have been doing more and more concept vlogs lately for many different reasons, you know, and one of them is because I feel much more, you know, I feel much more, how can I say, connected to you guys whenever I do a video like this because it's me coming here and sharing very deep and personal thoughts about my personal life outside of YouTube, you know, so not every video is, a, is like a dumb little gameplay or, you know, a vlog talking about an athlete with a bunch of statistics and stuff, you know, so so sometimes I want to just be real with you guys and come here and share something of mine. So, and when I started out YouTube, like back in 2016, all of my videos were concept vlogs. You know, it was literally just me complaining about something or talking about my personal life or this and that. So this kind of brings me back to that. And I have been enjoying these more. It's kind of like a, it's almost like therapy for me, you know, making this um, video entry, like a vlog, just talking about my personal life, you know, something that I happen to be feeling at that particular moment. So that's why I enjoy doing them. That's one of the reasons why I've been doing them more. And also because I've been short on time lately, so I can't, you know, do a bunch of well-produced videos all the time because I wouldn't have the, the necessary amount of time <laughs> to edit them. You know, I would I would not be, you know, following my schedule here, you know, of one video per day and two every Sunday if it weren't for these concept vlogs. So just be patient and bear with me. Forgive an old man for doing something like this as I don't fit in my head. <laughs> But anyway, here we go. Today's video is gonna be something very, very personal and I don't believe I've ever touched on this topic ever on this channel here, at least not in this capacity. The title of the video is simply sentiments or maybe it will be something else, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna title it sentiments or something like that, you know, feelings in general, because I'm gonna be talking about how exactly I personally as a person feel certain feelings Something about that didn't seem correct. The, the way I perceive and act upon certain feelings, that just made it worse. The way I feel things, okay? And how other people might as well and how it affects myself and how, you know, like the study of the psychological factor, you know, of the human mind can, you know, be largely attributed to what I'm gonna talk about. Basically, when you like someone, okay, when you feel some kind of attraction to another person, usually a member of the opposite sex, but it can be the same sex, you know, LGBT, whatever, you know, I'm pro LGBT, but I'm just saying I'm I'm a straight man, so I only feel attraction towards women, so that's why I'm gonna be referring to it as this, you know. When you feel an attraction towards someone of the opposite sex, there are certain hormones that are activated in your body, you know, or rather, not even hormones, right? The pheromones in your brain, which are largely attributed to attraction, you know, and the positive feelings of joy and satisfaction, you know. Sometimes just thinking about the person releases certain pheromones in your brain that spread to your body and makes you feel in a good mood, you know? But of course, it's all a psychological thing, you know? Your body doesn't actually become healthier just because you like somebody, you know? It's a psychological placebo. And it's what I've been feeling lately, or rather I was feeling until a certain recent thing happened, you know? I don't wanna get into too much detail about that because that's a bit too personal and I also don't want to expose that and the other person involved, but I will try to give you guys, I will try to explain a little bit of what's been, you know, going on. And I'm pretty sure you're gonna pick up on the details as that happens. So let's just go. This feels really weird. Whenever I do these concept vlogs without a script, I sometimes go a little off the rails a bit. But you guys, uh, I mean, what's more YouTube than unscripted, right? 
One thing here to keep in mind is that even if you've never been in a serious relationship in your life, you have at one point felt attraction, right? The concept of attraction is as ingrained into the human psyche as breathing, you know, or thinking about something you know, or blinking. Blinking is something so natural that we do it without even noticing, you know? So attraction is the same thing. We have been attracted to many people throughout our lives, you know? Even if you think you haven't, trust me, you have. You may not have asked on it but you definitely felt attraction maybe you saw a guy who you thought was handsome or a girl who you thought was pretty and automatically there you felt this strong connection to them that you could tell them anything and this and that no it's just an attraction you know and although it's superficial it doesn't necessarily make you shallow I'm guilty of this you know although I don't believe in love at first sight I do believe that sometimes just by looking at a person you know and seeing how physically attracted they are you can be attracted but I don't think it's love at first sight I think it's just a superficial thing that we that we as humans have you know so of course if you're the kind of person who only ever dates people then are only attracted to them because of their physical attributes yes that does make you shallow but looking at somebody who you think is attractive and feeling something towards them already I mean that's just normal but the thing is that what do you do when you feel attraction towards somebody that goes beyond that what if it's not just the physical attributes you know what if it gets to the point where you are so attracted to them based on their personality you know their 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 characteristics, you know, the, their sense of humor, you know, basically their actual character and like the physical attraction just becomes an, a, a little bit of a small cherry on top, you know. What do you do when that happens? Well, you might think, okay, well, I guess I'm going to go up and talk to the person and see if they like me as well. I'm going to say that I like them and maybe we can get into a relationship, you know, maybe they'll give me a chance and even if they're not into me, they might give me a chance and I'll make them be into me, you know, and everything will be good and dandy. And then you stop watching the comedy movie on Netflix, right? Then you finish watching the romantic comedy and then you go back to your reality, which is much sadder than that, you know? Unfortunately, this doesn't happen in real life. You know, we cannot control who we are attracted to. I have been a victim of this many, many times, you know? I think that throughout my entire life, you know, I'm 30 now, so that's three decades of experience that I can pull from, you know? And I started liking girls from a very young age, man. I think I was like maybe six or seven, you know? I was, I started to get into girls very early I don't know if six or seven is you know considered early or late but to me it's early as hell you know I think I had my first kiss when I was about eight or nine or you know around that area there uh, I don't think I had hit double digits yet but the point is that I started to feel these uh, hormones of attraction from a very early age however I have gone through many 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 rejections throughout my life I'm not ashamed to say you know at least I'm man enough to admit that I have been rejected many more times than I've been accepted you know so let's say that I don't know let, let's say just uh, as an example I have uh, I have tried to ask out maybe a hundred women in my lifetime I probably failed with about 85 to 90 of them you know it's been quite a few rejections you know and it, it, it has obviously affected my self-esteem over the years today it still kind of does but not as bad as it used to when I was a teenager you know when I was a scrawny little brat with braces you know looking back on when I was a preteen I can understand why no girl wanted to date me you know today it's different but I just don't want to get into that right now at least not in this video but the point is that what do we do when we feel sentiments for somebody that is very clearly unrequited now this is a very threadbare concept it's really hard to talk about and I have gone through it recently which is what inspired me to make this video largely in part you know because I know how much it hurts you know like whenever we feel something for somebody in my case sometimes I even try to like deny it you know I, I put myself in such a strong state of denial that I even try to outright say that I don't like the person but to quote a very popular song by Selena Gomez the heart wants what it wants you know you literally cannot control who you want it just happens you know it's like and I hate to reference this it's so stupid but uh, Believe it or not, it's the best example that I could think of right now. Do you know the Twilight books or the movies, whatever? Both of them suck. Well, there is this concept of imprinting, you know, with one of the characters, Jacob, who's the wolf slash the hairless wolf slash, uh, um, I don't know, the, the boy who's apparently a hairless werewolf, I don't know. But there is the concept of you have of the wolf clan imprinting on a female, you know, without them even knowing or wanting to, you know? Like Jacob is very clearly in love with Bella, one of the main characters, and yet he can't seem to imprint on her. He eventually goes on to imprint on her newborn daughter, which is just Jesus Christ, what is wrong with Twilight? But anyway, so that's kind of how it works. Imprinting. It's involuntary, you know. You you can't control who you feel attraction to. Sometimes it happens before you 
even know it. And that is what I think the most painful part. It is my personal belief that unrequited sentiments, as in, you know, let's use the L word here, love that is not returned, you know, is one of, if not the worst thing that a human being can feel, you know, one of the worst things that we can go to because it's actually very, um, it's actually very uh, subjective, right? So you could say, for example, that you think losing a loved one is harder, you know, it's more painful losing a parent that, you, that you're very close to or a sibling, a best friend, a pet, you know, but, I mean, think about it from an emotional standpoint, you know, try to think about, you know, if you've never gone through this, try to imagine it right now as I explain, you develop feelings for someone over the course of a long time, you know, maybe months or so, and you finally feel like the time is right for you to go and tell them, and then you do, and the reaction isn't good, you know, whatever happens, however they react, it's made very clear that they're not going to give you a chance, so you're going to take that love that you have and just let it fester there, possibly get worse and worse as the days go by, then you're going to see them actually meet somebody else that they want to have a relationship with you're gonna see that relationship blossom you know you're gonna see the person be happy and you're sad because you're not the one who's there with them making them happy you know it's really hard man especially if you have feelings that you think are unrequited and you don't tell the person you know you just keep putting it off because of your own pessimism you know you keep saying but that they don't like you they're never gonna give you a chance this and that you're gonna be hurt if you tell them but then you don't and they still find somebody else anyway, that's gonna hurt even more because then you're gonna go through that whole entire process of seeing the person be happy with somebody else and that relationship blossoming and you will never know if that could have been you because if you tell them what you feel about them and they reject you at least you tried this is a very important key factor here whenever you're trying to get out these unrequited feelings a lot of people don't consider the importance of that at least you tried you know because if you don't try you're never gonna know if you don't say anything and then you watch them, you know, uh, get with somebody else and then the relationship gets more serious, they might even get married, have kids, you're gonna spend the rest of your life knowing what could have been. Maybe that other person could have been you, you know? And that hurts a lot more than being rejected. I've actually come to terms with this in recent years where sometimes I'll of course be upset when I hit on a woman and she doesn't want anything with me, you know? Even though I try to be very respectful, you know, and try to maintain a, let's say, a degree of decorum when I try to, because there are some women that don't really know how to react when the guy comes on to them, you know, and declares his feelings, let's say. That's so high school, declaring feelings. Yeah, I'm going to write a love letter to her. But uh, I've tried that before, by the way. Crashed and burned. Don't ever do that. I've tried to write love letters in the past, you know, to kind of be ominous. But I think I talked about that in this video from last year, Romance is Dead, how nobody, this generation doesn't know what romantic gestures are. That's, that's a good topic to segue into later. But the point is that it hurts, you know. But if you don't tell them, then it's gonna be even worse. But there's also a, I think that we as men need to have a certain level of maturity and understanding when it comes to women because it's really hard for us to process what they go through on a daily basis. So sometimes you'll talk to a person, you know, you feel something for another, for a woman, then you'll, you know, tell her, look, uh, I'm sorry to bother you, but I've just been feeling something for you for a while. You know, I wanted to know if maybe you wanna go out or something, see if this works. She might react negatively, but maybe it's not even because of you. It's not always necessarily a problem with you the guy you know maybe she's going through a rough time in her personal life you know there's a bunch of stuff happening that's bogging her down she doesn't have the energy you know to be in a relationship and maybe she doesn't even know what to say maybe you caught her off guard and she doesn't know how to respond to you you know so maybe she will later maybe she never will but don't forget the important thing which is that you tried at least you said something and now she knows and you also know you know if it goes well then you guys can go out and you know, get to know each other know this and that but if it doesn't work out you have to understand and you have to put yourself in her position and I know it's hard to be a woman you know especially when it comes to dealing with men who are assholes so you have to be really really chill about it be patient if you really truly feel something positive for her if there is some sentiment there whether it's unrequited or not you have to be understanding that is the most important thing when it comes to dealing with women in general especially you know this specific part here, you know, the best thing that you can do is just give them some space, you know, let them think, let them process the information, you know, and then if they ever get back to you, then you act upon it. And if they don't, just 
as, as, as possibly douchey as it is to say, bro, just move on to the next one. You know, I mean, it's like, it's gonna be hard and I, I'm actually having difficulty doing this right now. So I'm actually kind of a hypocrite. I cannot follow my own advice right now for the life of me, but it's complicated, you know, because that, that's actually the best thing that you can do. There, there are billions of single beautiful women in the world, you know, beautiful to you because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. However, kind of woman you find attractive, you know, there are so many of them out there. So it's hard to get over somebody who you felt something for, you know, but because like I said earlier, you, we can't control like who we are attracted to, you know, but it's really complex because like whenever you start feeling something for somebody, you know, they sort of work as like a painkiller. I, I know exactly what this is like, you know, it's what I was going through for the last few months. And whenever you th you're having a bad day, just by thinking about the person, your day becomes so much better. I know what that's like. I do relate to it, you know, but it's so hard sometimes because like the person, it's almost like they become a lifeline for you, you know, especially for somebody like me who's dealt with depression, anxiety, and very dark thoughts, you know, like thinking about this particular person was helping me for so long, you know, get over myself and want to get out of bed in the morning and do things, you know, put a smile on my face. Sometimes they would post something on Instagram, you know, and just seeing their face showing up on my timeline, you know, with the notification for a new story, that was amazing, you know, just seeing their smile already made my day and looking at their stories, seeing how they were doing, what they were doing, if they were okay. It's really cool, you know? Sometimes we would talk and every conversation, even though it was completely random and unrelated to, you know, sentiments, you know, it just made me feel good. Unfortunately, I lost that recently because I have come to terms with it being a mistake. Although I was following the, the line of thought of like, at least I said it, I went to try to tell the person something, but the reaction wasn't positive. And even though we still do have some sort of a relationship, you know, we do still talk, it's really complicated for me because now whenever I think about them, I, I feel more pain than joy. So I probably dug myself into a hole here and I don't know how I'm gonna get over this person, but I know I will. I know that I will, I just don't know how or when, but I know that it's possible, you know? So, but it's all about respect, respect, you know? I have to understand that, you know, if I really do like this person, I have to, you know, wish them happiness. I have to hope that she is going to one day find the right person for her, which unfortunately will never be me. I have to hope for her to find the person who she genuinely wants to be with, you know, and who will treat her, you know, like just as good as if not even better than how the way that I wanted to treat her, you know, like have the, the relationship that I envisioned for us, you know, and that whoever she ends up with will recognize that he will be the luckiest bastard on the face of the earth, you know? So that's pretty much how it works. And that's how you guys have to, you know, feel as well, you know? And this is advice more for men than women because let's be honest, you know, men know more a lot about rejection than women, you know? Let's be real here. I'm not trying to be sexist, but come on, really? Like if you do a worldwide poll, you know, with the worst rejections, you know, don't you think that men are gonna be more on the top there? Because it's very rare for a woman to get rejected when she genuinely tries, you know? Such that there was a friend of mine who even made a joke about this. She is a woman, you know? She's like, you know, women are so used to being accepted, you know, that whenever we're rejected, we're like, wait, what? Huh? Huh? What just happened? Huh? What do you mean you don't want to go out with me? Are you gay? You know, it's like usually that's the reaction. You know, they, they, it's a society that, that uh, builds up men more than women in this degree. So that's what makes it complicated. But still, it is what it is, man. You know, unrequited sentiments are hard, but there is a way for you to, to get through them. You know, try to remember that there are bigger problems in the world, you know, because I mean, feeling attraction towards somebody who doesn't want you. I mean, that's just a first world problem, you know, because you know that there are you know dog shelters who are who are running low on food there are kids in africa who are starving you know there's the environment there there's so much stuff going on there's the war in ukraine so much crap is happening in the world right now so it helps us put a little bit more into perspective how actually painless it is by comparison our unrequited sentiments it's hard man it's hard I know it is, it's really complicated, you know, and this video is getting longer than I expected initially, you know, I didn't think that I was gonna have so much to talk about, you know, but it's really complex, you know, especially when you start having dreams about the person, which was my case, you know, I have had a few dreams about them recently, you know, you know, sometimes they're the protagonists, other times they just kind of show up in the background, and it's really hard because no matter what I do, I think about them, you know, I, I can't get 
her out of my mind it's it's uh, but it's normal you know like I'm 30 man and I, sometimes I still feel like I'm 15 when it comes to women you know I still feel like a scrawny insecure 15 year old kid you know pining over a girl who he can't have you know it never gets easier it does not get easier you know I still get nervous when I'm gonna talk to a woman you know about this so sometimes I try I feel like it's better to just you know push that those feelings down and bury them somewhere but it's hard because no matter what I do here at home or on YouTube or anywhere else I think about the person you know which has been hindering myself a bit and that's uh, it's, it's one of the reasons why I've been I've been struggling to get content out for YouTube you know it might not look like it in the videos that I do but I am always I am struggling with this in my head you know sometimes I'm not as enthusiastic as I could be because I can't stop thinking about her you know but I'm fine you know, it's complicated, but I have enough uh, emotional maturity to understand that it. it's just, uh, it's temporary, you know. And for better or for worse, I told her what I feel, you know. She knows. She knows. And all I have to, because she chose not to react on it, you know, I guess it's better just to hope, just to wish her well, you know, and hope that she continues living her life and I with mine, right? That's just life. But anyway, this is getting a little bit too melodramatic, right? Uh, speaking of having dreams about people, check out this video here. I'm going to plug something here at the end, you know, that I talked about uh, last year, I think, you know, about dreams possibly being another reality. Just to segue out of this, you know, got a little morbid here towards the end, but I just wanted to, to get this off my chest, you know, talk a little bit about that. We never choose who we love, you know. We, you, we can choose who we hate, but not who we love. It's kind of ironic, you know, but we can choose to work to get over it, you know, which is what a lot of us have to do right now. So, yes. And just like the great PewDiePie once said, always respect women. And that's it, guys. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever felt like this, you know. If you want to talk about something, you know, let me know down there. Maybe I'll try to give you some advice or something, you know. But I'm okay. I don't need any advice. I think I'm good where I am right now. I just got to work on it, you know. Do a bunch of other stuff to get rid of these feelings inside of me. But that's it, guys. If you happen to like this video, please go ahead and give it a like. And also subscribe to my channel because I release videos every single day. And while you're at it, hit the notification bell too so you can know exactly what time I upload, huh? And it's all good, baby. It's all good this is chazzy signing out for now and as always i'll see you guys in the next video roll the unrequited outro screen <laughs>